Now, youth restiveness in Nigeria has been a prominent issue in recent times. There has been an increase in the occurrence of acts of violence and lawlessness, including things like hostage taking of prominent citizens and expatriate oil workers, as well as oil bunkering, arms insurgents, cultism, amongst others, especially in the Niger Delta region. Now, nevertheless, youth restiveness is not a recent phenomenon. Various forms of youth restiveness that are economically, politically, or religiously motivated have existed for a long time. Now, the Nigeria Governors Forum at its 21st virtual meeting blamed youth restiveness on socioeconomic inequality. They promised to work with the federal government and other stakeholders to address the issues. Well, joining us this morning to discuss ways of curbing youth restiveness in Nigeria is the Senior Special Assistant on Youth Development in Delta State, Isima J. Vincent, thanks for joining us this morning on the show. Now, I want us to take this uh, beginning from the point of inequality. You know, could you please expantiate on how youth restiveness is basically based on inequality? All right. Um, thank you. Thank you for having me. I think um, when you're talking about inequality, you can go straight to um, tying it to poverty and inadequate um, distribution of our commonwealth. You, you will agree with me that for some time now, the youths in Nigeria have been neglected. There's a total disconnection from what is happening in government and participation of the youth. So the way or manner those in government are treating the upcoming generation left them to um, an end where they have no choice than to take to violence because these people have been neglected for a very long time. In Nigeria today, it's such a pity because um, it is clear that Nigeria as a nation state is sitting on a keg of gunpowder that is ready to explode anytime. Not until we understand that our youths should be meaningfully engaged to propel or direct our, put our, set our country in the right path, there is never a time that we will experience any form of peace because these people are angry. These people, sometimes they don't even have food to eat. So when they fall in the hands of sometimes disgruntled politicians, they are being used for so many, you know, issues against the communities. So not until we understand that we have a generation of people that we must pay attention to. We must pay attention to because these people are the people who can guarantee the stability of this nation. The way and manner the wealth of the nation is being distributed, it is in the hands of less than 10% of the Nigeria uh, population. So there is, no, there is nothing like middle class in Nigeria. It is either you're rich or you are poor. And the youth of Nigeria make up to more than 40% of the population. And these people are disconnected from the activities of the nation. So where does that leave the youth? They are not on the table where the decision of how their life is being governed is taken. From 1960 till date, you have the same people recycling ideas. And these people are disconnected from reality from what is happening in the world. You go to other countries, for example, you go to, you, you, you go to Canada, you see how young the prime minister is, and you see, the, 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 you, you, you see that energy being put into use. How do we have a country where only people that are like 70, 80 are the ends of affairs, and youth are not being included in the scheme of things, and you are expecting that country to head in the right direction. All right, Simaje, let me come in here. We're talking about people who are 70. The, 
The president of the United States is above 70. The one that is about to take over from him, from him is the even oldest. older than him. Uh, so, I mean, it's not just uh, Nigeria. You are a youth. You are in government. Yeah. Uh, now, let me take this. In some quarters, you know, the talk is that uh, over the decades, youths in Delta State and Wari in particular, they have not engaged or are not engaging in meaningful self-development, community development, intellectual and moral development, reason for a sharp rise in all sorts of criminal activities, including illicit use of drugs. Power is not given. We have to work to get it. What do you say to what I have just marshaled out? Is he All right. Um, what I what I think, you know, is that um, you 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 catch them young and nurture them to a stage where they become responsible adults in our society. They neglect mostly in the areas of education and appropriate dissemination of information has led to a breakdown where you are having these um, problems in our community. Today, who are the role models of these children? These people look at people who are stake to illegal activities to make so much wealth as their role model. Education in Nigeria is not accessible and it has become so expensive that we don't catch these kids young enough to nurture, nurture them in the direction where they will become you know, an asset to the nation. In some cases, you have kids who does not have access to even secondary education because maybe their parents are unable to pay the fees for them to either write WIEC and the standard, uh, the bar of getting into the university in Nigeria has also been placed in a place where it's not accessible. So not until we understand that we have a generation that we need to devise a means to put, in, put them into positive use, use who continually experience all this hiccup in, in our society. Nigeria, for example, we don't have, Nigeria, for example, we don't have a system in place that will cater for the children of a nobody. You have some parents who can afford to pay up to $200,000, $300,000 uh, naira for their uh, kids' tuition. Why some parents who have their monthly income at maybe 18,000 naira, how do you want them to, to, to train these kids? So at the end of the day, these kids fall into the hands of people who want to use them for illegal activities in, in the society. And when they are being given stipends, of course they have no choice. They just think that this is the best life. So they become a tool in the hands of either politicians or disgruntled religious leaders, then at the end of the day, it becomes a problem in the society. If you, if you, if you, can, if you can reflect back, what brought about youth restiveness in, in the Niger Delta region? Of course, the government was taking everything, almost everything from our land. And there is no form of equitable distribution of this wealth. And there is no meaningful concession that was actually given to the people who are laying the golden egg. So the people was, they were neglected completely. Not in, the, no proper right. schools. Yeah, um, I took, uh, we're definitely with you on that. However, um, the relate, it, you know, just like we were saying earlier on the show, there are always good eggs and bad eggs. You could have a child from a read, a rich family who still is, unresponsive and you can have a poor person grow up to become something successful but we're going to touch on this some more for now let's head out to a quick break when we get back we'll still have 
the Special Assistant in Youth Development in Delta Citizen, Andrew Vincent, with us. Stay with us. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We still have the special assistant on youth development in Delta State. It's Sima Jade Vincent with us on the morning show. Now, before we went on that break, you were talking about how it's almost as if, you know, there's such a huge imbalance. The rich kids just keep on going on being successful and they have access to better opportunities. While these poor kids, because of the system that they're, you know, built in, have lesser access to these. However, we have seen where you know, the reverse is the case. You know, these people that have access to everything that they could possibly need still go on to not do anything important. And the kids that apparently have access to nothing find a way to create something big out of the little that they have. So based on everything that you've said, why do you think Niger Delta has been neglected? And in terms of the oil bunkering, why do you think that has become so prominent within the state? Is it like there's really nothing to support these youths, as I would like to call them, as opposed to calling them kids now, in creating a better life for themselves with or without an educational background? Yeah, um, you will agree with me that uh, once you are uninformed, you are deformed. You know, these kids do not have access to information that will set them on the right path. And that's why I was actually trying to make the argument that when you don't catch them young, nurture them to become better persons in the society, try to develop that inborn potential and capacity of individuals by teaching them what they are supposed to know at the right time. Of course, what you see in the society or community is non-entities, you know, committing some form of uh, menace. So in Delta State, for example, Education today, as we speak, is not a priority to the children. Because I said earlier on that, who are the role models of these kids? Who are the successful people in their various community? Who are they looking up to? So this goes a long way in you know, preparing the direction to which these kids want to head. So it's a serious issue. And if we look beyond that, we also have the problem of unemployment that has eaten deep into the fabric of the nation. For example, in the Niger Delta region, you have the oil uh, multinational companies coming to work in our land. They will bring more than 40 or 45 percent of their workforce from other parts of Nigeria and even expatriates. Some of the people they bring from their countries to work in the Niger Delta region as expatriates does not even understand the, the skill required, even more than those working in the company as either labor, you know, uh, casual staffs. So they just, they, they, they try as much as possible not to engage these people in sensitive areas so that they really don't understand what is happening, you know, in, in the company. So lack of Education, which has led to lack of information and unemployment, is, the, is one of the, the, the biggest reasons, you know, youth restiveness is thriving in the Niger Delta region. And with the current templates being introduced either by the, the, the federal government or even the state, it is only going to get worse. Not until we sincerely engage these youths meaningfully starting from even um, the homes where, you know, we'll disseminate necessary information to, to parents to try as much as possible to keep their eyes, to keep their eye on their, on their children, to return those core family values where people will understand that, yes, there is a dignity in labor, you know, teach them the right things, but of course, a parent that cannot provide food for, 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 for a child, how do you think that parent will speak to the child and the child want to listen? It is only when you, when you, when you tell your child that if you are engaged in this, what's, whatever you are enjoying from me as a parent, of course, I will cut it off. That's when the child will have a rethink. But a child that can barely have three square meals in his parent's house, 
the, the, the father or, 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 or mother does not have any form of uh, moral justification to talk to the children that this is the right, uh, this is the right path to, 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 to move in. So uh, the government must try as much as possible to engage the people meaningfully. All right. I in the Good. I can comfortably say that you're the government. You are now part of the government. I want to ask you two questions. Because, I mean, when it's easy for people to talk when they're out, but you're now in. You're the yes. senior special assistant. So, and it's easy to point fingers, but you're now in, you're part of the government. How serious, that's number one, is the drug problem in Delta State among the youths? That's one. Two, how are Say you... Say that again? How serious is the drug problem in Delta State among the youths? And then how are you walking around correcting, you were talking about unemployment and so on and so forth. So how are you walking around correcting the state of affairs? What's your strategy? to get them gainfully employed and in doing something worthwhile with their lives? Yes, um, like you rightly said, I am now in government. And what is my um, contribution towards correcting all these hills in, in our society or in our communities? Um, as the uh, senior special assistant to the governor, on um, youth and um, community development. I have um, developed a template where I had to bring some young people on board with me because I know that the job is not um, possible for me alone to, 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 to run um, the race like it's not a 100 meter dash. So I, I have about eight personal assistants I have a personal assistant on policies and women's sensitization. I have a, poli I have a uh, personal assistant on anti-drug. I have a personal assistant on, on anti-development uh, levy. I have a personal assistant on um, information dissemination. I have a personal assistant on media. I have a personal assistant on youth engagement. I have um, a personal assistant on logistics, then I also have a personal assistant on um, hobbing child child labor, right? So, for for some months now, I've been I've, I've been on the table with these people, trying to cross pollinate ideas on how to curb, you know, these um, problems in in our community. So, hearing from these young people, it has actually given me enough idea on how. To navigate, but some of these things, some of these programs that we've developed over time, they they are, are kind of capital intensive. It is not easy for you to 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 embark on this on these programs when you don't have um, the necessary the necessary tool. And sometimes it goes on to get to the point where after talking to these people in either a seminar or workshop, you need to give them like starter pack on how maybe to go and, and start a petty trade because as an individual, outside being, you know, the, the uh, special, senior special assistant to the governor on youth and community development, I'm also an entrepreneur. Somebody who has, I was, I was the person who actually made the Asher B that our, uh, our players use in going to, to Russia in 2018. So I am a big subscriber of entrepreneurship. But sometimes you really don't have any form of moral or um, justification to talking to a people that does not have any starter pack to go into business where they need to um, fit for themselves, to be self-reliant. Um, so I, I have put together some proposals that I'm going to submit to the governor on how to deal with some of these things and also tell the youth the reason why they should stay away from, from drugs, why drug is not the best, the, the best way or best form of life. You know, but going to these people, sometimes after one or two minutes of engagement, the first thing they will tell you is that, 
we've not eaten today. How do you think we can actually sit here and listen to you on an empty stomach? So you, you, we, we, we try our best to engage these people, but the resources are not enough. Like in Delta State, the government has actually set up some programs in agriculture and um, some other in, in, uh, entrepreneur, entrepreneurship programs where um, people can actually take advantage going into the programs and all that. But the vast majority has not been carried along because the government alone cannot do this. We must also have people, people you know, in the private sector taking on some form of corporate social responsibility on how to deal with these things because it definitely boomerangs. When you ignore some of these things, it will go and come back. Like the production of oil today has dropped significantly because the politics of divide and rule that is being played by the oil company is turning around to affect them. But if this oil company are living up to expectation by engaging in proper corporate and social responsibility, by building schools and educating the people in the areas of their oppression. All right, uh, uh, Simadia, before time uh, runs away from us, uh, let me just chip in this. Uh, I, I hope you're aware. Governors are blaming youth restiveness, of course, uh, uh, Kachi did talk about that, on socioeconomic inequality and are therefore resolving. The point I'm trying to make is that they're resolving to adapt guidelines to be developed and issued by the National Economic Council Subcommittee on engagement to deal with this issue. What do you make of this approach, this plan, both by the governors and the federal government? Yeah, I think I think um, it is a fantastic one, but the issue here is the sincerity of those who are embarking on this project. We've seen lots of projects, you know, that uh, is meant or uh, that has been that has been coined to take care of the activities of youth in Nigeria, but. Of course, there, there are no form of sincerity behind some of these things. And that's why you see that, you know, we take one step forward and we take 15 steps backward. Money that is meant for these programs should be judiciously channeled to, to, to this program. It's not about, you know, bringing out um, fantastic ideas, then at the end of the day, it turned out to be some um, form of caricature. We must be sincere. If we really want to curb the menace in our society, we must be sincere and engage these youths meaningfully. It's just like a parent having a child. The reason why you are training your child is because you want that child to grow up and take over from you. It's either your business empire or whatever has been, you know, taking so much energy from you. The way we take care of our children at home, the way we nurture our own children that we give birth to, let's start to think of the Nigerian youth or the Nigerian, the Nigerian population of those that fall within the age bracket of youth in that direction. You know, you, you set out money to pay for your, 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 your child's school fees. You are not going to use that money for any other thing, but to put it into that project that that money has been marked for, so that at the end of the day, that child will come out to become a, will turn out to become a better person in our society. Not that you put 20 billion into a project and at the end of the day, the entire money is stolen mm. and the project and everything becomes, you know, frustrated. So we must be sincere in our approach. Sincerity is what we need in Nigeria today. It it's is not definitely about what we need in Nigeria today. Sincerity is immensely essential. Well, Mr. Vincent, thank you so much for joining us today on The Morning Show.